Hello, I'm Knorr, but you already knew that. <clears throat> Last week, uh, Focus Home Interactive had their press event where they revealed a lot of upcoming titles. Among them were uh, the news of Blood Bowl 2 Legendary Edition. And on Wednesday, so two days ago, when I'm recording this, uh, was the embargo date. Um, Focus had sent down uh, Lupac and uh, Sage both other Blood Bowl streamers to, to uh, well, reveal what they were, and they revealed that on on Wednesday at noon. So if you want a more in-depth talk about what they actually showed, you should probably check out their videos. I'll link them down below. But I'm because EC content, I guess, I am going to do a, a quick overview of what's actually... Uh, what uh, Focus and Cyanide are saying are going to be in the new Blood Bowl 2 Legendary Edition. Uh, expect fancy graphics because I've done this. So, uh, hi. Uh, <laughs> this webpage, this is from the uh, Blood Bowl Game Forums where uh, Nethos, one of the uh, community managers at Focus, has posted what's included. So let's go through it together and have a think about what this means. Now, in general, uh, I am going to speculate somewhat, but on the other hand, it's probably a bad idea to speculate too much uh, because things change. Um, and it's annoying to be annoyed at things that might not even be an issue. In any case, now I've said that. So, uh, first of all, before we go anything uh, any further, uh, Blood Bowl 2 Legendary Edition. Release date, uh, they say 2017, aiming for a summer release if everything goes well. Previously, <clears throat> it's taken a while for Sinai to get some of their uh, Blood Bowl games out. Specifically, Blood Bowl 2 had a delayed release. Uh, so I'm hopeful for summer, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's delayed. Personal opinion, um, I'm still hopeful for summer. It seems like... I think the important thing here is that Cyanide and Focus seems to be really listening to the community, which is awesome, uh, because there are a lot of things here in Legendary Edition that's really good, really interesting. If if they can deliver everything they say they're going to deliver, this is going to be the best version of Digital Blood Bowl out there, and it's also going to be the best version we've ever had. Uh, let's go through it. Platform, PC, Mac, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. I don't think anyone expected anything else. Um, it's I find it interesting that they're still going for console, which probably means that it kind of sells decently on console. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Uh, price. So this seems to be similar to the way Blood Bowl 1 worked, in that if you had Blood Bowl 1, well, Dark Elf Edition, uh, when they released Blood Bowl 1 Legendary Edition, you didn't have to pay full price. So it was essentially an expansion pack, but it's a full new standalone game, but you could still play backwards to Dark Elf Edition, I think? Or was it Dark... In any case, that's how it worked between Legendary Edition and Chaos Edition, which was the final edition for Blood Bowl 1. Uh, I don't want to say too much, because I've forgotten all of it. <laughs> uh, so, and new players with Legendary Edition will get all the content from Blood Bowl 2, um, which means that the race pack, so all the DLC that has been released uh, up till this point. We are still, right now, we're still waiting for Chaos Dwarfs and Kemri, and existing Blood Bowl owners will get the new stuff that's not part of the Blood Bowl 2 package. So if you haven't bought any other DLC for Blood Bowl 2, you're not going to get those races with the legendary pack that's uh, at a reduced uh, price. But you can always buy them uh, in the game, like if there are some races you're missing. Full compat uh, compatibility to bleh, full compatibility between the two versions. Awesome, great. Here's the fun stuff. Content of the official expansion. Eight new races, meaning the stuff we've been missing. So Amazons, Goblins, Vampires, Ogres, Halflings, Pro Elves, fucking finally. Underworld, fucking finally. Kislev, looking forward to, uh, based on the rules of Slon. Now Kislev is going to be a circus team for whatever reason. The... Uh, what the community th thinks, and that's probably the case. A Games Workshop doesn't like Slon, which are like frog people. Um, they have agility 3, agility 4, and they use a lot of leap. Uh, I haven't played much against Slon, so I don't know what to think of them. They're usually not considered a high-tier team, but it's awesome that they're he here. 
because that means we have a total of 24 uh, races in Blood Bowl 2 Legendary Edition, which is great. Uh, the one missing from a digital Blood Bowl perspective, of course, would be what, uh, the team that came in Blood Bowl Chaos Edition, which was the Corn Demons. Uh, they're not here, but they were also created specifically for that game, so it's not that surprising. Hi, Thursday. Um, then there's a lot of other things you can do, like Swiss System, which is awesome. Resurrection Mode, which is how Tabletop is usually played. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. Uh, which means that you get your full team back after the game. Um, and when I say tabletop, I mean tabletop tournaments. So it's, it's a very common format. So it's pretty cool that they've included it here. Um, team editor, which means uh, you can choose a race and get unlimited gold and then just add stats and injuries. Which means that we can transfer... Like, if we have a team lost in Blood Bowl Chaos Edition and we want to bring it over... We can do that for a specific league. So great for those that are still in leagues in Blood Bowl Chaos Edition or Tabletop and want to continue but um, but don't have the time to do Tabletop. So that's nice. They will be uh, tagged as custom teams so they can't sneak into the open system where everything's fair, uh, which is cool. Yeah, so goal with the team editor, Resurrection and Swiss system. Give the opportunity to players to experience the rules played on Tabletop, which I think is a really smart move. Uh, new solo campaign, I don't care, but good for those that play single player. Brand new stadium, okay, fair enough. Uh, mercenary teams. Now, if you're a real Blood Bowl nerd, you would have realized that when I counted up all the teams and said, Hey, Slon slash Kislev is in, you'd probably go, but hang on, where's Chaos Pact? Because Chaos Pact is not in here. Um, and instead, they've decided to make something they call mercenary teams which is composed of players picked from different races several uh, groups of teams you can pick your players from so this is kind of similar to what they did with dungeon bowl <laughs> that no one remembers but essentially you had a pool of different teams and you could pick players from those uh, this means that these teams are going to be very overpowered compared to what the normal teams are because of course you're only going to pick the best players um no, probably you're gonna get like if you're gonna go for elves you're probably gonna get some war dancers you're gonna get some pro elf catchers you're gonna get the uh dark elf blitzers or something like that um but it's like the fact that they're there is still awesome uh we'll see i'm being internet thursday so i mean it's it's just a nice added bonus i think it, it can make some fun tournaments star player teams uh okay uh new chat t uh, tab in league that's one of the things we were missing in blood bowl 2 from blood bowl chaos edition no in-game chat which kind of partly destroyed the uh the community there we had to move to other places maybe this can bring it back a bit they're going to be um league specific which is probably a good thing if you're in a league where it's kind of hard to find a game and then post-match chat so you can actually say gg after someone has scored at the end or failed to scoring Manual seeding competitions, great possibility to play a mix of human and AI teams. Okay, that's probably a good thing. Uh, better AI. Uh, I think they've been claiming this since early, like the first Blood Bowl one. Um, like I said, I play mainly multiplayer or only my multiplayer. I played like one and a half games of single player in Blood Bowl 2. So I don't really have, like, I don't know what to say about that because good probably. Optional skills, also very important if you want the proper Blood Bowl experience. It does add a la layer of complexity and more strategy to the game. So that's great. Hopefully, they'll come up with a system where it's easy to make it work properly. Free camera mode? Okay. Uh, save during single player game? Okay. Option to deactivate aging in solo leagues? Smart. Uh, enhanced comp uh, competition administration? Ooh, that's, I mean... Yeah, the part of the problem with the leagues currently in Blood Bowl is that there's very few admin options. Uh, so adding this is a good thing. Poor system in multiplayer, they had that in Blood Bowl 1. It worked decently when it wasn't like, when they didn't bug it out somewhere, I think there was an exploit. But they knew about that and got fixed. Fame displayed during a match, smart. New cheerleader models, okay. I mean, currently they only show up 
Actually, I don't know if they show up on the sidelines because they don't pay attention to it. Uh, but otherwise, of course, in, in between the breaks. But that's nice. Same colors as the team they're supporting. Also great. Option to display the tooltip and dice probability. This is good. I really like this. I thought the uh, percentage was... I mean, it's, it's nice for beginners. Um, but I think the 2 plus makes more sense. That said, I've probably gone on record saying I like the percentage before. Uh, I've gotten used to both of them at this point. A lot more star players. So getting 50 star players, that's probably most, if not all of them. Um, <laughs> my cat is being annoyed with me. Uh, they won't have premium skins, which I think is their way of saying we're not creating 50 star player models, which I think is fine. Uh, one of the problems with the star player previously is that they look really cool, most of them. But you very rarely get to see them in-game because most of them aren't that good. Uh, now, having all star player teams, another option to see more star players. But the fact that we have all of them now gives us um, greater options when it comes to inducements, which is awesome. Uh, option to mute chat and match. Uh, cool. Uh, it will probably stop me from annoying people that are raging. An option to ban players from a comp uh, competition in-game. Smart. A lot of small other things. Uh, so, uh, as Nitho says here, 95% of the content of the Legendary Edition is uh, directly taken from your feedback and suggestions about, about Blood Bowl 2 since launch, which is awesome. And then we have some neat screenshots here. This is the Kesselev Bear. And here's the, the, that's the Fanatic, right? The Chainsaw, the Bombardier, and yeah. No, that's the Pogor, not the Fanatic. Uh... But in any case, that's that's the information we have. Now, all of that sounds great. If they can deliver that by summer, I think we have a hit on our hands in the sense that Blood Bowl can be a hit. But it's a good time to release it. Uh, all of this content means that people will have less reason to pick somewhere else to play. And all of the suggestions for my part are uh, are good ones. However, no, however is the wrong word. I do have some questions, though, because there are a few things here that's not mentioned. For example, the bank rule that we currently have in Blood Bowl 2, which, of course, means that you can't have more than 150,000 gold. After that, it counts towards, towards your team value. Um, so, it, And it's a way to stop people from stop, uh, stockpiling money, basically. Um, I, don't I don't think the bank rule itself is bad. Um, it's decent. I like it works. However, it doesn't work with the stadium upgrades, which is a way to you know get your stadium to look cooler. I don't think I've ever experienced the higher levels of the stadium uh, like graphically because I'm not gonna spend. I'm not gonna wait uh, or give my opponents fifty extra in team value just so I can possibly save up to buy that uh, graphic enhancement that has no in-game effect later on. So I'm hoping they have a solution to that, where either re do something else with the bankroll, uh, have, let me drop money onto stadium improvements, and once I've dropped enough, it'll go up a level. I think that's a fun solution. Uh, so that's one of the things I'm uh, wondering about. The second thing I'm wondering about is the actual inducement system itself. Currently, it's... It's working weirdly. Like, if I spend money, my opponent doesn't get it. Which might be a thing with the bank rule because we don't have as much money. They're like, okay, so it doesn't matter if you spend this. But it might, like, it does in a way. It still favors, it still favors people with more resilient players, in my mind. Um, if they don't feel that way, I mean, they have a lot of stats they can probably look at games played and see that kind of thing. Uh, but I would at least have want them to acknowledge and say, okay, so this is what we're doing with the, like, the match start. Uh, and I'm sure I'll come up with more annoying <laughs> things to ask about. Uh, but those are the big ones currently because I've been, I've, I've read it and I've been like, okay, this is really interesting. All in all... I am super pumped for uh, for uh, Blood Bowl 2 Legendary Edition. I don't think I've ever been this pumped for a new version of Blood Bowl because this does seem to add very much to the game. 
and it seems to add a lot of the uh, fun fun races back which is part of the charm of blood bowl oh that's right one of the things i forgot to mention stunty teams in that goblin and halflings are back are we going to see a change to the uh tv matchmaking system because they do want to play at a lower team value to be semi-competitive in the current system people wouldn't play them and have a chance to win because you wouldn't get that 300 in inducements to get the third tree man and the uh, like the halfling chef and all that kind of stuff uh if they could figure out a way to f uh, to fix that or have it change to that that would be that would be awesome and i hope they do otherwise i think we'll mostly see halflings and goblins in league play and maybe that's where they want them and well i say league i mean uh shorter tournaments with the visions like the uh, demo bowl that kind of stuff not in the perpetual leagues because they wouldn't really stand a chance Okay, I think I've, I've been rambling on for 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop do that, but at least I've got this done. Uh, I'm sorry if you've heard all of this before, I'm sure you have, but I feel like I should at least try and, like, drag this content out of me, um, so people would stop asking. <laughs> uh, once again, I am super pumped about this, I'm really looking forward to it, if Cyanide can deliver it, uh, by summer that would be amazing and I'm hoping they do um, but I won't be shocked if it'll be delayed a few months uh, even then uh, Blood Bowl is looking good guys it's looking really good uh, final goodbye because <laughs> I need to go see what Thursday just did because it sounded strange <laughs> see you guys later bye bye bye